Hi, I'm Guy. I'm the head of R&D at Coty. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. In the next few minutes, we'll be going over the solution we did for the Bank of Israel for the project of the digital ILS, digital shekel. In this project, we are going to demonstrate how we managed to bridge the gap between the traditional banking system to the Web3, similar to what was done in Icebreaker, the project by the BIS for cross-border retail CBDC's payment system. So it's going to be exciting. Stay tuned. Let's talk about cross-border payments. We are going to focus on a specific one, even though there are lots of implementation. The specific one is the electronic market of ticket selling, electronic tickets for concert shows. It's a market that generates three to five billion dollars a year. It's a hand-to-hand -end market, consumer to consumer, selling online tickets for concert shows. Bob from the US wants to sell his ticket because he can't make it to the Taylor Swift concert. Emma, that lives in Israel, wants to get to that concert and she wants to buy his ticket. So we have two individuals from different countries. One wants to buy the ticket and the other one wants to sell the ticket. Fundamental issue in any secondary market is the mistrust between two individuals. That market is filled with counterfeit and fraud and assets that change hands multiple times. How was that solved up until today? Online services that enabled you to buy and sell that ticket. Those services have high charges of fees from 20 to 45% also with intermediates such as banks and credit cards. We want to remove intermediates. Let's use the smart contract. We want to remove the chance for counterfeiting. Let's use a smart contract. We want to pay using different currencies. It's easy, let's use a smart contract. Digital marketplace for online concert tickets. That's what we want to show you today. It has a reduced risk fraud, lower transaction fees and conversion rates and market expansion. Our solution was inspired by the project Icebreaker done by the BIS. The BIS, for those that are less familiar with it, it's a bank, a central bank for all other banks. The banks that took part in that project was the Israeli Central Bank, Norges Bank, and Sweden's Risk Bank. The project tested if it's feasible to conduct a cross-border transaction with cross-currency transaction between different retail CBDC systems. If you're interested to find out more about that project, please take a look on the link in the video. So let's talk about our solution. It's DVP, Delivery versus Payment, for cross-border retail transaction using HTLC, Hash Time Low Control. Why DVP? The Bank of Israel wanted to improve the payment experience for consumers for exactly the same issues we've just mentioned removing intermediates, lowering transaction fees, and minimizing time for settlement. Also, DVP was the use case that was presented part of the BIS project. And that solution requires privacy for it to become feasible on blockchain. And privacy is something that Coty knows best. We've talked about the solution. Now let's see the demo. Emma from Israel is interested in buying the ticket for the Taylor Swift concert happening in the US. Bob wants to sell his ticket. Bob will deposit his ticket using his wallet to the LiveLink DApp, the decentralized marketplace application. Emma will use her wallet to deposit the digital ILS into the same DVP contract to fund and buy that ticket from Bob. Let's take a look in detail. At first, Bob will use his digital wallet, as mentioned, to deposit the ticket as an NFT to the DVP contract. Emma, on the other hand, will basically create an HTLC transaction to instruct the bank 
to lock the funds, the funds that she wants to use to buy the ticket. In parallel to that, she will send the encrypted password that's used to release the funds to the contract. Now keep in mind, she encrypted that password using her AES key, using the GC technology and send it to the contract. In parallel to the fact she sent it to the contract, also the ASP, a special kind of component, will get the hashed password from the digital bank and make sure that whatever she sent as a hashed password encrypted is the same. That functionality is special only to Cody. After she made the deposit of the password that represents her digital ILS that monetized it into a real world asset, something that's worth money, an FX provider, some foreign exchange will see that that transaction happened and will offer her the best rates and perform a deposit of the foreign currency, the digital USD that Bob wants to get into the contract. So now what do we have? We have three parties that made a deposit to the contract. We have Bob that deposited the ticket. We have Emma that deposited the funds in her digital local currency. And then we have the FX, the foreign exchange that deposited the currency accepted by Bob. And he knows to withdraw the funds that she deposited, Emma. Once all three parties deposited the asset they needed to, a settlement can happen. Now, Bob will get his digital USD, the foreign exchange will get the digital shekel, and then Emma will get her online ticket. That's how we've made sure everyone will get his respective component, his respective asset in one settlement without any intermediates in immediate settlement. Now, that's possible only in respect to Cody's garbling circuit, enabling privacy. The fact that Emma was able to encrypt her password to the funds, and then the foreign exchange was able to decrypt it. That value, that password was not decrypted at any point into a clear text in this process, so no one can access those funds. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the solution we've done for the Bank of Israel. Stay caught